five years later. What's up gang, it's your boy Dean here. If you're looking to replace one of these wheel bearings, you came to the right spot. So before we get started, I'd like to know, do you have access to a shop press or not? I've got a poll question up here. I'm gonna be using a shop press in this video, but I'm also gonna be using a hammer like you've seen in the intro. So these wheel bearings aren't that hard to do as long as they're done properly. I've been doing these for over 20 years. As when I worked at a dealership, I've been teaching it to my students for over five. Um, I've got a method that will get you through this. So I am curious what kind of vehicle you're working on. If you could drop me a comment down below. This came out of uh, 01 Jetta. Maybe you're working on a Honda Civic. I have no idea. I would like to know what it is you're working on. So you came to the right spot. Stay tuned and let's get this video going. All right guys, obviously I went through, loosened all these bolts up so they were ready to come apart to try and save some time. The first step we have to do here is remove the steering knuckle from the vehicle so we can get access to that wheel bearing. Sometimes this is easier than others. You can see here I'm popping the ball joint out. Uh, there's times where you need to use a puller on some of this stuff or you can use two hammers. Uh, they recommend not to hit them with a hammer. The only method appropriate for hitting your ball joint tapers with a hammer is to actually use a hammer on both sides so it absorbs the impact. So, On this jetter, the strut goes into the steering knuckle like that so you got to tap that out and here we go we're beating the center hub out. I just got it set up on some wood blocks. That's something anybody can do anywhere. Just want to make sure you use the right size adapter or like I used a 27 millimeter socket in there. Next step after we pull that out is to get the snap ring out of here. Sometimes it can be a tr bit tricky because of that reason I wasn't able to actually even film it. So just do your best if you got snap ring pliers or use a couple of picks. Do buy a new snap ring however because usually it gets damaged. So. Now I've got the knuckle supported here on the press. There's actually an old bearing race down there. You want to keep this stuff as square as possible. And then I've got an adapter in there. Again, I got a spacer with a socket. And that's just to make sure that I'm pressing on the outer portion of that race. If you just press on the center section of it, the only thing that's going to happen is it's going to fall apart. And you're still going to have to press it out from the outside of the race so all that can be done with a hammer also guys if you set that stuff up in there and beat on it with a hammer you can get it out of there I've done it this way before as a matter of fact when I first started at the dealership we didn't even have a press so that was how we were doing all of them at the dealership I purchased this press for this job actually from Harbor Freight I think it was hundred and twenty dollars hundred and eighty dollars maybe well worth it in my opinion it just saved me a lot of hassle and I've been needing one for a long time so there you have it the bearings out stay tuned for some pictures at the end of this on how to clean that surface up so you can see our new bearing is on the bottom side of that sitting square on that plate I'm using the old bearing on the back side of that knuckle in order to push the knuckle down so it just happens to be the perfect size adapter to fit on there no sense in uh, trying to be fancy if you've got stuff that will work so <clears throat> at this point I had to flip it over I do have this adapter set if you don't have an adapter set uh, not a problem I'm gonna show you here in a second something that you could use instead which if you've been working on vehicles, you will have some of these around. So it's just an old bearing race. So I'm gonna throw that old bearing race up there and I'm going to use another chunk that I had laying around right here. There you go, that's the piece from the press. Now everything's nice and square. You could use a chunk of wood if you wanted to. I 
I can see here after I did this video, it's kind of hard to video and do stuff at the same time. I wasn't even completely square with my socket up there, but I was able to press it in, no problem. It only has to go just a little bit more from the point we were at there so we can get to that snap ring groove. And there's our nice clean snap ring groove there. So the pictures I was talking about showing you guys just a little bit ago is the inner part of that knuckle where that bearing goes in and that snap ring groove. I always take a wire brush on my drill and clean that stuff up. So you can see I got the new snap ring in there. Again, I was unable to hold my camera and install the snap ring at the same time. So I made sure the bearing was spinning freely. It's good to know if you've got a problem at that point before you keep on continuing. So I found the proper size socket to support that inner race. I've got everything flipped upside down in the press again. And I'm just going to press that hub into the center of our wheel bearing. I clean the hub up also. So I just take a little bit of sandpaper to it, a fine grit. I don't want to take any material off. I just want to clean up any rust that may be there. You can see that this has a lot of rust on it. This Jetta actually had over 360,000 miles on it when I put this wheel bearing in and spent its entire life in Michigan. So if you're not from Michigan, let me tell you, we get a lot of salt. It uh, tears our cars up pretty bad here. Now we're back to our assembly. When I took it apart, the one cotter key in the tie rod end was rusted in and seized up. So I actually had to snap it off to take the nut off. Real simple procedure. Instead of fighting with the key for a long time, I just hammer a socket on and then I drill them out to start over again. So you can see here I'm talking it back down. My famous trick is to put a punch in the brake rotor so that way you don't have to have somebody pushing the brakes or you've got a pry bar set up holding the studs because that never works out well. Hey gang, thanks for watching the video. If you liked what you've seen here, please click the like and subscribe buttons down below so I know which content to keep producing. Hope everybody has a great day.